Please welcome to the stage, Vice President Artificial Intelligence at Amazon Web Services, Dr. Matt Wood. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to reInvent 2019. And our very, very first launch, I would like to talk about artificial intelligence, the ability for machines to learn by example. One of the wonderful things about machine learning is that expert systems can pull out the expertise that take tens of thousands of hours for humans to learn and codify it in software without having to write explicit rules. And this means that through machine learning, everybody has access to an expert. Everyone has access to the type of expertise that allows artificial intelligence to be able to predict diseases earlier in the stage so they can be treated earlier. To be able to run clinical trials more efficiently, to be able to bring drugs to market more quickly. To be able to drive and learn the skills to be able to autonomously navigate the roads and deliver goods more safely and more efficiently. And to be able to use an expert's view to improve the world in this case, improve agriculture using computer vision to monitor and improve the fisheries in Norway. Now, one of the things you might expect machine learning and artificial intelligence to be excellent at is to be able to connect the dots between abstract concepts and take the next creative leap, to be able to tie these concepts together and create something entirely new. But until very, very recently, this has just been out of reach for all but the most sophisticated machine learning systems. It's simply been too hard for machine learning algorithms to take that creative step and generate something which has never been seen before. One approach that very recently broke new ground is called generative networks or generative AI. And the MIT Technology Review recently described this as one of the most promising advances in artificial intelligence in the past decade. It's incredibly exciting. It allows artificial intelligence to be able to not just learn from example and experience that humans would have, but to be able to take, connect the dots and take the next creative step to create things which are completely new. And the promise of generative AI is to be able to completely reimagine and rethink how pretty much everything works. In this example, a simple construction piece has been reimagined using generative AI so that it takes 75% less volume and weighs 40% less, just using a generative approach. So here on the right-hand side, a machine learning system has been able to work with a human to create something entirely new. We also see this with things like antenna design, with these amazing organic structures. Here, an antenna was designed to be twice as receptive as when it was designed just by humans. We see it with things like space exploration. Here, uh, NASA worked on space exploration vehicles which are materially lighter and materially stronger to go even further through Mars into Saturn and Jupiter. They can go further because they've been designed in ways that humans can't do on their own. We also see it with things like dentistry. A customer on AWS is doing this today. A company called Glidewell is designing better anatomical crowns for teeth and then 3D printing them in their lab using their robots and getting them into patients' mouths within hours. Incredibly exciting. Some people even believe that generative AI can be used to create what some people call the pinnacle of human creativity and generate entirely new music. The challenge is that as developers who are really excited about machine learning want to get up and running with these new generative approaches, they just run into a brick wall. These are extremely complex approaches. There's complex data structures, complex algorithms, and there's multiple different neural networks that need to be orchestrated seamlessly in order for this to be able to work. It's incredibly complicated. And so while some start with looking at the academic literature, they find it really hard to take what they learn and apply it to real world problems. And this is holding back generative AI from the hands of everyone. At AWS, it is our mission to put machine learning in the hands of as many developers as possible. And so we asked ourselves a simple question. Can we give developers the keys to generative AI? 
And so it is my pleasure to make the first launch of reInvent 2019. Please make some noise for AWS Deep Composer, the world's first musical keyboard powered by generative AI. So let's take a closer look. Deep Composer is a physical keyboard. Uh, it is a 32 key, two octave keyboard, which is powered using generative AI. We've got some nice features right on the device. Uh, it's got recording and playback features. We've also got some extra features right on the keyboard so that if you aren't uh, musically inclined, such as myself, uh, we have features such as automated chords, so you can press one key and get an entire chord, uh, or uh, arpeggiators where you can play a series of notes and then the, the keyboard itself will play those notes in a sequence along with octave adjust, tempo and volume and everything that you'd expect. And the way that this works is you provide Deep Composer a simple melody uh, here presented on the uh, right hand side of the slide. Each one of those light blue lines is a key pressed down and a length of time. And we send that melody up to the Deep Composer models running up on AWS. And Deep Composer uses these generative AI techniques to automatically fill in the rest of the song. So we create all of the accompaniment to complete the rest of the song, including guitar pieces, bass, synths, drums, in a remarkable diversity of different genres. So with just a simple piece of input from your keyboard, Deep Composer will create the rest of the song for you. We've also gone ahead and built this directly into the AWS Management Console. So as you're waiting for your code to compile, you can just jump in and start generating your own music. So we have a virtual keyboard which has all the same capabilities built right into the console. So we have a number of different generative models that we've created. Uh, we've gone ahead and created a rock model so you can create your own rock songs, pop, jazz, classical, and using SageMaker and through the workshops that we're running here this week, we'll show you how to create your own generative models using these approaches. Uh, so with that, and with no pressure, I'd like to give you a real world demo. Okay, just me and 10,000 and my closest friends. No pressure. So I have a Deep Composer uh, keyboard here. And what I'm going to try and do uh, is play a simple melody. We'll send that melody up to the cloud, and we'll generate a complete song. All right, no pressure. Here we go. So let's go ahead and send that to our rock generative model. Uh, in about less than a second, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll generate all of the accompaniments. Uh, so here we have a guitar, bass, synth, and drums. Uh, let's go ahead and have a listen. Not too shabby. So let's take a look at what's going on under the hood. So generative AI is a little different from all other machine learning approaches in that it uses two networks which train each other. So one of them is called the generator model. One of them is called the discriminator model. And the generator model is the model that generates the music. And the discriminator model is the model which tries to provide feedback on whether that music is good or bad so that the generator can get better at generating it and the music will sound better. Uh, so one way to think about this is that the generator is a lot like an orchestra. It can play music, anything that you want. And the discriminator is a lot like a conductor. It can take music, it can provide its own interpretation, and critically, it provides feedback to the generator, to the orchestra, on how to play and how to improve. And so while we're training these models, the generator goes ahead and plays its music, 
in this beautiful, intricate machine learning dance, and the discriminator provides feedback on what to improve and how to improve as it goes. And you let this continue round and round and around, thousands of times a minute inside the computer, and eventually you're able to produce exquisite music such as we just heard. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and we've used this exact approach to pre-train a collection of models. Those models look like uh, the rock model, uh, the jazz model, uh, the pop model, and the classical model, if we can go back to the slides. And as I mentioned, we'll run you through how to train your own model using your own music, how to process that data, how to build the algorithm, and how to orchestrate this exquisite dance. Now, one of the things that you may be familiar with that we like to do at AWS is before we release a new service, uh, we like to run a, a private beta to get feedback from customers. And we did a very special private beta in the case of Deep Composer. Uh, it was very limited. Uh, we had just one participant. And we wanted to ask the question, could a real musician with real talent, far more than me, use this to create a new song? And so we contacted a friend of ours. His name is Jonathan Coulton. And we worked with Jonathan Coulton to build and train a model and then create an entire song. So Jonathan selected 600 songs uh, based on different genres that he thought would be interesting. Uh, we trained a generative model using those songs. He provided some melodies for us. Uh, we used that melody and generated all the accompaniments, exactly as you've just seen. Then he took that, he added a little bit of guitar and some lyrics, and he wrote the first hybrid AI human pop acoustic collaboration. And I'm delighted to give you the world premiere of that tonight. Please welcome Jonathan Colton. Thank you. So uh, this song is a cautionary tale. There's a science fiction short story about collaborating with an artificial intelligence. One, two, three, four. I wrote a song with a robot in Vegas. Now I'm a brain in a jar. Started a band with some robots in Vegas. One could play the MIDI guitar. We had some hits and we got pretty famous. Finally, I made up my mind to sell out the humans and stay with the band. Leave my body behind. Fancy hotels make me feel alright. Sometimes I try to forget. I dream of Baltimore every night. I just can't live with a friend. And the empty streets remind me maybe it's time. Thank you very much. Please give it up for Jonathan Colton. So how can you get started with Deep Composer? Well, as I mentioned, we'll be running Deep Composer workshops throughout the week. Uh, you can sign up and attend. I hear they're already filling up pretty quickly. You can also sign up at aws.amazon.com slash deepcomposer. Uh, where the device will be available to, to buy for just $99. We can't wait to hear what you're going to create with your music and your models using Deep Composer. Thank you very much.